Today's lesson is about Unit 5, Lab 00 and Lab 01. First, you can think about the warm-up. Array is an array of doubles, double values. Then, write the code to swap. Swap means you are going to change the values in two places. Switch, that means swap. So, whenever we do swap, we are going to use index number. So, you are going to think about there's a room A and room B. You are going to change only contents in room A and contents of room B. So, we probably need a, another. The third person, third storage temp. So before you fill array A with array B, you are going to give array B ha array A has into the temp. Then temp holds the value what array A originally had. Then you can move array B to array A. So this is number one. This is number two. Now you're okay to have a new value in array A. Then you are going to finally assign what temp has into array B. So that is the temp. So if we see the answer key here, you can see double temp has array A first. The reason type of the temp is a double because array is a double type. Then array A has array B. The order is very important. Then array B has temp. By using this swap, we can think about something else. That is bubble sort. If you look at exercises lab 00, this is sorting algorithm. This is just the one step of a bubble sort. One phase of bubble sort. So this is important. Now if I go back to lab 00, what lab 00 is doing first in the main method. Uh, first part to reading the data the text file, so get the num items by reading the first number, then read all the numbers of so this part is populate. Then from line 7 through I can say up to 12, the closing the in file is input part. Unit 5 is a data processing. So let's just see. This is the input. Then if you look at the final, that is output because it prints something. Then you can see in the middle part, we say process. Lab 00 process is find the mean value and find the max value. But by not by using the value, minimum values of position, maximum values of position. It's like a hardest hole of unit 13, uh, lab 13 of unit 4. So if you look at here, there's a find the mean method. First, you pass the array, but when it, this array comes to find the mean, it changes the name. So there's only one array object which has two names. In main method, this one is called as array, but in find the mean method, the same array is called as an apple. That means find the mean does not know name array. It knows only name apple. How can we do this one? First, this is about the position. Every array has index number zero through something. So you can start with position always with zero. Then you're going to find the mean. So whenever you find the correct position's value is smaller than the mean position's value. So instead of using the mean value, you're gonna use Apple mean pose. Now, whenever you need to update the mean pose, you are going to change mean pose. No, you don't have any other variable. Just the position is enough. You don't have to have a value. After you update mean pose, at the end, you are going to return mean pose after for loop. So you go through the whole array, Apple, 
then update mean pause as needed, then return mean pause. That means when I come back to the main method, it says a minimum value, not minimum value to position. That means you are supposed to print the value here. So no double quote. It says a question mark, that means you need to write something. So I'm going to write the answer here, array bracket mean pose. You cannot use a mean pose itself. So when you run this, if you finally, when you get the output, if you finally get like a 0 0.02 something as a mean value, then 999 point something as a max value, that means you did the lab correctly. If you have like a 2200 or something, that's something wrong. That means you printed the position, index number, not the value. Value is always between 0, 0.0 and 999 point something. Now, let's think about today's real thing, selection sort. So in Unit 5, one of the big concept is a sort, sorting algorithm. Sort means when you have like a random data, you are going to make it in ascending or descending order. Today, we are gonna use ascending order, but by using maximum value each time. That means find the max value and put the max value at the end. So small to large. We are gonna work on fill out big. Now let's just see. Uh, you are going to have two steps each time. We call this so each step as a phase. So each phase, you are gonna find the maximum values index number, then swap the maximum value at the end of the current last. I'm going to explain what is a crumb to last later. First, before we start, so we would like to have give index number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It says find the maximum value. So I found it, maximum value 16. Then crumb to last is index 7. So swap 14 and 16. That means Actually, this is 16 is fit. So you found the maximum value put on the last, that means you don't have to touch this value again. That means it is fixed. So after I copy the rest of the value, now we are going to see what is a new maximum. Oh, that is a 14. So Max position is still four, but current to last is now not seven because this is fixed. You are gonna search up to one less. So you are gonna look at index six as the current to last. So you are gonna swap those. Then that means 14 found its correct position. I'm going to copy uh, all the values. Now, you are gonna keep doing this one. Repeat the remaining elephant element. Now, let's see. Now, current max is actually index two, max position is index two. Like I had this the whole in lab 13, we need to find the first max. Then, current last is index five now. So, after you swap, we are going to copy down. Then I can say this 12 is now fixed. Now I'm going to find the current max. Oh, that is this one. And also current last is index four, same position. Oh, so I don't need to do anything. Depends on how you write the code. If you didn't write any special condition, you need to still swap. <laughs> so, 12 swap with 12. Then now this is a fixed. Then I need to copy the rest of them. 
Now, current to max is index 0, max position. Then current to last is index 3. Then swap them. Then 5 found the correct position. Now, copy. Oh, this is sorry. So can I stop here? Actually, no. If you don't do something else, you need to keep doing. That's our level of current. So we are going to find maximum value and current to last. So I'm going to swap by itself. So this is swapped by itself. For this part, so swapping by itself, actually it's very easy to write the code. So you can think about that. Negative. Well, five and one. Then I need to find the max, current max, and with the current last swap, so one goes down, it is fixed. Then when I copy down, oh, when I have only one element, actually I don't have to sort it because if you have only one element, that means it is already sorted. There's nothing to compare. So now let's think about analyze. You may look at the packet page 7. It has also a table with a different values. So here is my whole selection sort. Then let's think about that. If, you, I, if I want to implement this, how many for loops do I need? First, I need one for loop for each phrase. Then, to find the max, I probably need a for loop. So I can say like a two, but nested for loop. Each time, I'm going to find the max with the inner for loop. So outer for loop actually represents how many lines on the left side. So, you can say like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, or eight lines when you have eight items, zero through seven. So n or n minus one. That means your loop will stop at already length or length minus one. Now the inner loop needs to stop before the solid part. So first time you go through until the end, the second time one less, third time two less. So I can say this one can be n no my range minus something. So outer four loops variable. So each time. So this one gonna be like a first time up to eight seven, six, something like this. So this one represents already the length. First time up to already the length. Maybe one less because you need to check the index. Then already the length minus one, already the length minus two. Let's analyze a little bit more. If outer is n times for convenience, let's choose n. Then inner is changing each time, a through one. So let's think about average of n over two. So each time n over two. So I can say total time of processing of my computer. That means I calculate something that is n squared over two. Oh, it's a quadratic function. Quadratic functions, parent function is n squared or x square. So I'm going to say number of items square. That is a parent function. We call this as b o n square. b o efficiency. By checking how many calculations your code needs, we can calculate the how efficient your code is. That is a big efficiency. So selection sort has big O n square efficiency.